Hello everyone and welcome to yet another live coding and chill. I'm your host Johnny and it's great to find you here. It's Friday, one of my favorite days, top seven favorite day, top one really. I hope you're having a lovely one and you'll join me coding together. Maybe you'll be doing something on the side while I try to figure out how to do streaming with Svelteket. We'll be doing Svelte again, we'll be doing OpenAI again. I am hoping that you have watched my video on how to do generative AI using OpenAI, ChatGPT, and uh, Svelteket. It's 20 minutes, but I think it's very succinct minutes, streamlined minutes. So we go, 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 and we'll learn quite a lot. If you don't know much about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, I do think we go through the whole flow of building something that you can actually present, share with your friends and have fun with them, but also present during interviews, put in your CV, it's gonna be a decent one and you'll definitely have learned a lot afterwards. We have learned a lot after releasing this video live because what we made was this app that uh, behind the scenes will hit OpenAI and create a custom greeting for whichever name you put in here. And you can see that it loads for quite a bit because ChatGPT 4 is really good, but slower than uh, ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo, for example. And then it will make a panic greeting. It has a few parameters that uh, I've set to simulate me, to impersonate me. I think that's quite cute. So it's not just the large language model known as ChatGPT uh, replying, it's ChatGPT pretending to be me. Try that different flavor, have this be like a calling colored website. But it takes a while and you've seen that, thanks to the previous stream as well, we've made it so that Svelkit will be streaming that final response to the server. So the moment you share this to your friend Zach, they will get a load of most of the website. They'll see the header, the footer, and uh, the content in between, but they'll get this waving hand, uh, animation, pulsing hand, animation. And only then, after we've gotten the response, they'll uh, get their actual greeting. But hopefully, because they've clicked the link and immediately they see something very, very fast, they see something, they'll stay and not bounce and wait for the actual result. Without the previous stream, the work we did in the previous stream, they'd just see maybe a loading bar, maybe nothing, and maybe assume that the app is dead, doesn't work. The attention span nowadays is especially limited, so they may be bouncing to something else that they'll never see your site, which uh, would be sad. The other thing we have done is that we do hit Redis uh, for uh, any greeting that uh, has been generated before. So after we've hit Zach for the first time, we have persisted their custom greeting. So if we hit it again, they'll instantly get it. You don't even see the loading animation really. It just kind of flickers, but uh, the way we've done it, it's going to be instant. So once again, if you say hi in the chat, I will put your name <laughs> in there and uh, we'll find a name, hopefully that I haven't used before, like uh, Isaac with a K. Once again, you'll see we get the pulsing hand, classic loading and missing. And then we get the panic greeting for Isaac spelled in this particular way. And if you do share this link with Isaac, then we'll get this immediately. Now, uh, how we've done this in the past stream is by using the streaming with promises section of uh, the SvelteKit docs. They make HTTP streaming quite easy if you do that. So if I switch around to my code view, you'll be able to see that for the greeting, we initialize it here and say it may be null, it may be a string, or it may be a promise that there's also a string, such as null. Then we try to hit Redis. You can see get greeting is from our Redis library. And then if uh, we do get a result, then we parse some markdown to have those nice colored effects happen. Uh, or if not, greeting remains null. If we don't have a greeting, that's when we hit OpenAI to create a new chat completion, which will eventually resolve after a few seconds, maybe five seconds. 
and it's only then that we'll set the new greeting to Redis for that specific name and return the markdown output. Now you can see that we are not awaiting this create set completion here because we don't want greeting to be a string in this instance. We want it to be a promise that is also a string because this takes a while. This takes a few seconds. And if anything is a promise and it's nested at least one level deep, Svelket will load all the data that is not nested and that is not a promise, but will stream any promise that is nested eventually to the server. And that's why we get that uh, wave in hand, pulse in hand, even animation. You can see that data streamed greeting is a promise that we await. While we await it, we get the wave in hand. And then when it eventually resolves, we have a greeting which we parse as uh, HTML. So we did that last stream, it was fun. What we tried to do then was integrate with a streaming response from uh, OpenAI. If we look at uh, their docs or even their own uh, chat tool, uh, their demo for uh, ChatGPT, we'll see that they are actually using streaming responses there. So we can pass a flag called stream. If we set that to true, then ChatGPT will start uh, responding with uh, partial greetings for us to keep up ending. So if I say, uh, please respond with a greeting for a streaming audience on YouTube, It's a coding stream. You can see that we have this uh, cursor that keeps blinking and then it keeps kind of typing. So these are partial responses we get up as a stream and uh, this front end is consuming the stream here to immediately give me something to know that, all right, they've registered the response, they're working on it and I keep seeing the results and I can even start reading it. So that's quite cool. That's what we'll be trying to do today because we've made some headway last time, but uh, we didn't succeed. <laughs> so what does ChatGPT4 have to say about this? Hey there, code enthusiasts. Welcome back to another epic coding live stream on our YouTube channel. That's Tony's, that's Jay McGrippis, the YouTube channel. I'm super excited to have you all here today as we dive deep into the world of programming and unleash the true power of code. So grab your favorite beverage, settle in, and let's get those brain gears turning. Let the coding extravaganza begin. And I guess this is where I should have like a uh, a board, whether those called like a DJ type of board where you press a button and you have the siren going off and all of that. But I don't, so we'll just get into the coding. So in order to accomplish that, Let's uh, look at the agenda. So I've explained what we're doing today. I've explained the easy way to do HTTP streaming with uh, Svelkit. That's something we can actually use uh, in a very straightforward way. We'll take a few minutes and then you will actually have it on your CV and have something to talk about on your interviews. Because especially bigger companies, I'm sure they're not on uh, the infrastructure that can support streaming responses that easily. And yet you'll have done it, which is cool. But now we'll take it to the next level and uh, consume a uh, streaming response ourselves. Like, let's it do it, not have Zolkit magic do it for us. And for that, we need to create a server endpoint that is going to be returning a stream. And how we create any server endpoint is we go into our source routes directory. And uh, we have decided in this project and a common practice, a common st a standard even to have everything that's kind of a server route, a server only route, kind of public route, be under a, an API directory. And we'll probably want to replicate the structure of our regular route here. So we'll do a, maybe a read directory, then a name, or maybe not. Maybe that's gonna be like a post, uh, a part of a post parameter. 
sure. So create directory and then uh, plus server.ts. And uh, I'm uh, expecting that this will mean that if we hit api slash greet, we'll get something back eventually. But to be able to respond to a post request from here, we export a post, the verb of the method we want. And it's gonna be something that satisfies request handler, I imagine. And it doesn't satisfy it yet because it's empty. So let's let's return a response of uh, other words. Eventually, this will be a stream. We need to move this up, but for now, let's do it in the classic way. And let's go to our UI and uh, let's create a variable for. Uh, streamed greeting it can be it's gonna be empty string I guess and uh, what we want is on mount to start the request so we've talked about load methods before so our page was filled once again as a server endpoint that magically loads data for it. It loads the meta tags and the stream greeting, but all the data that uh, a load method can return can, should be able to be serialized. So it cannot return a streaming response here. We cannot return a stream from our load method, sadly. So what that means is that uh, when our page mounts when the component mounts that's when we'll do the request to open up the stream and start getting data in so on mount when this component mounts we want to do something and for now we'll just do a local fetch request to api greet <laughs> so it looks like video copilot GitHub Copilot is uh, kind of doing some of the work, but not quite. So API slash grid is what we decided. And we want the method to be post. And just for good practice, we can say that the headers are going to be new headers that are going to have content type application JSON. And it's also going to have a body which we're, where we're gonna JSON stringify the name. But in order therefore that to happen, we need to go to our server method and also return the name. And we don't need to stream that. We know this from the URL params. Not the search params, the magic URL params. So name, it's gonna be data name. The TypeScript, the Svelte Dev server has created the TypeScript types that always magically update what data has. So now that I've added name to a load method, we know that we can use it, which is quite neat. Uh, and then, <laughs> Sure, then uh, response, response text, whatever. We can make this a sync, I guess, to be slightly more realistic. Maybe GitHub Pilot have suggested this. If I had made the amount a sync anyway. So if response okay. Sure. So it, it started adding some uh, leader stuff because I was playing around with this before and on the previous uh, stream, but uh, I don't think they're quite right. We'll check them again. For now, 
Uh, let's say that uh, the stream greeting plus equals the response text. And let's render the stream greeting here. So I expect this to start empty and then almost immediately it returns as a hello world because that's what we return in our server method. We also want to make use of our uh, JSON body. And uh, for that, maybe there's an example here. Although I can only imagine I'm not sure if they parse the JSON body for us, if Selkit does this magic for us. So apparently there is a request object here, which we can await like this, like so. And we can return the classic of the most classics. All right, so for this page, we get word, the default page for the Anthony page. Get hello, Anthony, and of course we're streaming a response back. A tongue code, not the best pun, for sure. But hey, uh, server endpoint works, which means we can start getting the grid. Hello, have a nice day to you too. Let's see if it can make a pun with uh, usernames as well. Not bad. Pretty good, actually. So, for our stream greeting, up now, we're not using streams. We want to return a stream back from our server. And uh, as we saw from the OpenAI reference, all you need to do is add the stream flag there. So if we go to our OpenAI file, can pretty much copy our chat completion wholesale for now and call it create streaming. Chat completion, it's still gonna take a name parameter. And then I think we'll just return the fats immediately. Not do anything else. So we can even land this. And for our body, model messages are going to be the same, but we also want to pass the stream parameter here. And this should mean that uh, OpenAI will be responding with a stream. So on our server method, we can uh, get the name param as before, but what we can return it's the response from OpenAI. So create streaming chat completion given this name. And the question here is, will Svelte be able to figure out that what we return here is a stream or not? It uh, does eventually resolve with something which does look like the response or similar to the response we get back. Their smile is there. But let's see if we can consume it as a stream. So I will have a sip of coffee. Create the server endpoint, should be correct. Then it's all about consuming it correctly on the front end. Which is something that uh, I did need to look up. And for once, well, uh, Stack Overflow in 2021 did point me in the right direction. of How do you consume a stream uh, on the front end here? So, 
you do the same fetch request as before and uh, we can check if the response is okay and the response has a body but instead of consuming the response as text we'll need to do some streaming stuff and uh, what they say here is to create a reader after piping the request through the response through the text decoder stream so if you remember from our live stream this returned uh, like ones and zeros back i guess it returned by the, uh, encoded uh, text which if you run through the text decoder will actually return it as something readable for us I was looking into if there is anything native to immediately parse something as uh, JSON, but it's not really JSON, so I don't think there is. We need something custom. In any case, when we have the reader, we can create a nice while loop here. Keep it true. We, we may tweak this at some point, but for now, we'll keep it true. Then the response will be something that uh, we'll uh, log and uh, check. If the don't parameter is true, it means that the stream has ended. And uh, what we kind of want to do is append to our uh, stream greeting, but it's not going to be the value because the value is going to have a specific format. And remember, every time I save, I pay some money to OpenAI. So the stakes are high here. I need your support. <laughs> All right. So, you can see that it keeps adding things to the page, which is good. Uh, but, uh, of course, the response we get back has this format, kinda. It's slightly different to this uh, format from uh, what I've seen. So, it still has an ID, an object, and a creator, and things that we don't care about. But it still has a choices array that we do care about. But the message key doesn't exist, I believe. It has a delta, so it only has the difference from what we had before. And also, all of this is prefixed by a data colon space before you get your JSON. And also, for at least the first message, is what I've noticed, you get two data chunks back so you can see that here we have data colon space then a json to parse but then we have a line break and then another data colon space and a json to parse so when i first uh, tried this i thought that you always get data colon space and a one single json to parse but actually this value here can have a couple messages in one go and it only happens on the start so far but uh, i'm not sure and also at the end it has a data colon done so not a json there which is quite interesting something to keep in mind in any case it feels like we need to extract that json out and i don't know if you've got better ways to do this but what i was thinking is that we can have a split on the value on data space. And can this be undefined? Ah, oh, I see. Okay, fair enough. So if done, break. If no value, continue. And then, if there is a value, split on the value on the data thing, which we can try out here on the browser. Ideally, we've got a test for this, but uh, this is not an ideal scenario. Doing this when you live stream, it's not an ideal scenario. So if you can look at the tiny text on the bottom left of your screen, 
uh, it seems to me that the value looks like this. So my reasoning is that if I split the value on uh, data colon space, all I get is an array with nothing because we split right before the initial data and then adjacent to parse. And what I'm thinking is that even for the first message, which actually looks like this, so the first value, let's say it's this, oops. So let's say that the first value, so I will need a template string because it has a line break. The first value, we can also split on data space, but we'll have three elements. Again, it starts with uh, emptiness because there's nothing before the first uh, data, but in any case, we'll be ignoring it even if there was something unexpected. And then it has a JSON with line breaks, which I hope are not on the message, to be honest, but we'll see. And, uh, hmm. those line breaks are a bit worrying. We want to capture all the JSON, but uh, I don't really want to look ahead on uh, curlies because it may have many curlies. I want to know if I map this to JSON parse, what do I get? Yeah, that's not great. <laughs> so if I JSON parse nothing, that doesn't work. Fair enough. Uh, what if I JSON parse the first element, the one that has the line breaks? It does work, all right. And uh, it is gonna work for the second element. Sure, great. So all good, really. What we want to do is split on data colon space. Hey, Andrew, nice to see you. You'll get a greeting in just a bit. But we've seen that uh, we may have multiple JSON strings there, so we can just do the rest of the JSON, uh, JSON strings by, by spread in here and then we can even uh, for it and just in case we can try and catch I guess all of this to not have a, a dramatic error Look at this out. And uh, for each JSON string, we want to const JSON, include JSON part JSON string, and then append the greeting there. So, is this gonna work? I think it will. Undefined, 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 undefined. It kinda worked. <laughs> Uh, so, of course, we cannot append the JSON greeting, I guess, because that's an object. I expected this to be like object, 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 object. A JSON greeting, that, I, that uh, GitHub Copilot made this up, this is not a thing. So, actually, we can create a little help, helper here. And uh, a helpful type. Let's see, let's see. I think it's going to be a bit different from uh, our chat uh, position. Like string. Uh, 
completion. So it looks like we have ID object and this thing, which are strings. Oops, they want to just select it here. We have this, which is a number. And then for the choices, we have a delta, which is a string. We have index, which is number, and a finish re uh, reason, which may be null, or a string, if I remember correctly. And uh, the docs say what the delta could be. Delta can have a content string, but not always, because the first one doesn't have a content string. It has a role assistant, but the rest have a Delta object that has a content and no role. So I think that should be correct. Why am I doing this? Because I want to have a type card called is streamed at completion and then we can check the data is an object and then claim that this is a streamed at completion if it has a choices array and then it has a delta And should I check for content, even though sometimes there is no content? It's stream chat completion with content, maybe. Uh, I could check this is an object, I guess. If this is an object, we're good. And we can export this type card. <laughs> the tokens are being spent. Insert the uh, spent sound effects. Hey, Ian. Uh, yeah, we're working on the hello there.cat app. Let's see what type of methods we get in here for you. But the last name, uh, the last name afterwards. So this is the one you can check out and the code is also available on GitHub. We're trying to make, instead of that wavy wait time, perform like ChatGPT does here, the OpenAI demo app, where it uh, looks like it's typing. And I think we're almost there because if we go back to our page, if we do go back to our page, Then we can say is streamed at completion JSON. We can say if it's not, just continue. No, return where we're in for each loop. Uh, then this will have a choices, which will have a first element, which will have a delta, but not ah, the this card should actually be saying that this is a streamed sound completion. Now we're good. So now this should have a delta, which should have a content, which may have a content. Uh, we append this to the greeting, and I'm hoping that we'll get a greeting being typed right here. And for maximum effect, 
I am gonna remove the nice greeting we had here from the back end. Let's just stream the response. Hmm, almost there. <laughs> Uh, so my problem now is that this type card, I've put it in a server directory. This is unfortunate because it means I cannot use it on the front end. So maybe I can export it into its own file. Let's call it is streamed. Completion, but yes, export it, and I guess this also means that I need to get this type here. Export it too, why not? And now, if I go to the front end. And I bring this in from the non-server directory. Should be able to use it. Nice. So we got that undefined from uh, handling the the role message. Streaming unlocked, we did it. Uh, and ask as well, VS Code looks like uh, <laughs> Vim mode. Uh, I don't remember which theme I have. I probably have co committed it into a version control somewhere. But yeah, it's just a theme that uh, I like. That uh, I think it's in between uh, Sublime Text and uh, maybe material design, like something that in my head looked a, a little bit like a Darkula, like a those themes. Uh, I've, I was never super proficient in uh, Vim and Vim uh, likes, although I can use them. Uh, all right, so did we do it? <laughs> we are consuming the stream. The questions now are, uh, how do we persist this stream on the backend? Now, every time we get to this page, we'll still be getting, uh, we'll still be performing a request to OpenAI, which costs money, uh, what, uh, and is a bit slower, even though it looks cool. So what we want to do is persist this to Redis again, but it's, the front end that has a complete response that we'd want to persist on uh, the Redis server, but you wouldn't want to have your front end send something to Redis and uh, save that because if it's front end, then uh, naughty people can do naughty stuff with that. Hey Stelio, how are you doing? Let's run that into our app as well. Yes, so great to see you. <laughs> You're by the star in the Golden Galaxy. Let's get signing and let's go together. I think the pun is supposed to be with iOS. I think that's like a famous uh, system or something. I don't know. I know it and you may know it as an island in Greece. So I'm not sure about this pun, pun but hey, we got it. And ask what I do currently. And uh, I guess I'm kind of in a sabbatical and only doing consulting and uh, mentoring work at the moment. I've uh, done a few contracts in uh, the past year, but mostly just focusing on mentoring, learning and teaching others. 
and holidays are coming up as well. Hot summer in Barcelona and Greece. Right, so first thing, how do we parse this markdown? The library I was using on the backend to parse markdown also works on the client, in theory. Uh, let's see if it does. So can we, like how fast is it gonna be if we do reactive assignment here? And parse our, run our stream greeting through the marked library. And then use that as raw HTML. Nice. You can see that the stars initially for Markdown do appear. So you may want to like trim them if you really want to, but I think that's kind of a cool effect that we can make even cooler in the future. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like how it works now. This emoji, unfortunately, doesn't quite work. But hey, that's by the by. Question is, how do we persist this greeting on the server, on Redis, once it's complete? That's a good question. <laughs> For that, like, should I do the type and mission first? Maybe. Just a blinking text. Let's ask ChatGPT. Hmm, interesting. All right, I'm not gonna <laughs> relay what the uh, ChatGPT is uh, saying, but uh, this is kind of the instructions you can find that Tailwind said about generally bringing in Tailwind systems in uh, your project. The blinking, I think, is cool. My suggestion on how to do an animation like this uh, would be to check out the video where I'm doing it in React and the video where I'm doing it in Svelte. That may be a better way to go about it. But uh, I haven't watched it in a while, so maybe not. Maybe ChatGPT has replaced me already. But then you don't get like touch jokes and stuff. Uh, have I tried Bing AI? I have not. I think I've used one product that supposedly uses it behind the scenes. But I am surprised uh, because Microsoft for GitHub and all of that stuff, they're working with OpenAI to do it and not Bing AI. So I would think that they don't want to promote their own stuff. So I'm not sure. Have you worked with Bing AI? So our blink animation that uh, ChatGPT is saying just uh, makes it go from opacity one to zero. And uh, I wonder if linear is the one that makes it so it's gonna like be either 100% or zero. I think it's a different one. Yeah, I think it's a step or a single step or something like that. But in any case, uh, what I do want to do is target the last P. So put one here. And also stop logging stuff because I think we did get the point. So I would want to try at the end of this P to have a blinking cursor, but would that work because It would be at the end of the line, in any case. Hmm, not sure. But in order to track this, it would be on our 
this div on a P and uh, let's say on an after element let's say it has like a width of uh, like four pixels or eight pixels let's make it obvious on height of eight pixels and uh, it has a background color color primary I don't know about that uh, let's make it like green make it obvious see if that changes anything I should not click it <laughs> I may need to use the global in this one. Ah, I may need content. Of course, you need content for a pseudo element up here. So I would hope that this would do it. Yeah, but this has no width. There is a pseudo element here, but it has no width. Interesting. Hmm. So does it need to be at least an empty string? I'm not sure. We can make it be like a pipe and then something happens. All right, it looks like it's gonna work. Okay, would it work without the global tank? No. So because Svelkit doesn't know that uh, this part screen is gonna have uh, P tanks, it's not able to apply a custom class for it. But if you do global, then it will work. Specifically on any P inside this specific div, this one, it uh, will add the after development. But we also want the last one, in case there are many. Uh, would that work equally? Last child? I think so. Right. So in case the response has uh, quite a few. Uh, how do we make this? Have width even when there is no content. It, it, the moment there is some content, it's, I guess. And we can hide it like this. But is this the proper way to do it? Maybe. There's some relative things that... Ah, of course, it's in line. Johnny, come on, you know this. Let's play inline block. All right, a bit better. So, would we want like a specific height? Can we make it be like a character height? Based on container, maybe not. Maybe it's fine. Just trying to think that 
if this was like zoomed in a little bit. It kind of scales correctly, so I kind of like it. So what should the color actually be? It can be emphasis, we call it So yeah, not text emphasis, just PC emphasis, and then it looks like this. And the question now is, can we make it blink? And uh, ChatGPT says you do it like this, which I think will actually work. So we can uh, apply it here. Great, so you can see it blinking, but we want it to have discrete steps. Which I think is like step or something like that. Oh, it's an emission time function. Cool. Uh, so maybe the more a nice time would be oh, sweet months. Cool. Let's see it again. Interesting that it doesn't actually blink as we're typing. I wonder why. Is it because this paragraph gets replaced? So if I just make this be in the after of the whole div, what would happen? You know, not great. Yeah, I guess the whole div gets uh, replaced. That's why the animation isn't actually playing out. Which is unfortunate. But it feels like we would need to do something like that. Because we do want it to be blinking at the start as well. Yeah, that 
active. It's just too big. What if we have another div? It's fine. We won't spend too much time there, but let me know in the comments if you have other suggestions on how to do this. I think this looks like decent. Let's see. I guess you can have like some state management on the past string. But, uh, yeah, even so, because of the markdown, you do want it to be inside different elements. So I wouldn't actually be able to do it. I can make this a bit more lith. We want to appear even before we have a... a paragraph. Can we do a, an OR? <laughs> Start with uh, with some state management. Or we can do like an if there is a no, uh, there is no burst greeting. So if it's still the empty string. Or if there is this thing, render it as HTML. Else, let's render an empty p tag. So yeah, not, not too bad. And we can even add like the dot to dot. Or even type in. Kinda cute, I would say. Is even copy muted, I think. Looks like it.
All right, enough with uh, like you can make a type in animation, uh, a little animation with the dots as well, but uh, maybe that's uh, enough. When this is done, we can uh, stop the cursor because it's a bit annoying, isn't it? Like it makes you think that uh, they'll type even more or that you can type there. So you'd probably not want to do it. So if we call this blink, blinking cursor, can apply it to this. And it still works, but we want to conditionally apply it. And let's refresh our memory on conditional classes. I think it's class and then the name of the class and then true or false. Let's call it cursor class. Correct. At the end of all this, streaming is false. So hopefully when all of this is done it will stop but you actually have to pass this here. Cool. You could even set like a timeout to have it stay for like a little while longer, but I think that's enough playing around with uh, the styling. Let's consider this done. Let's take a sip of coffee. Did we do the whole agenda? That's nuts. All right, so let's do something that we may not be able to do. <laughs> uh, So, uh, what I'm uh, thinking here is that I want our server to be the one that persists the final full response to Redis, to our database. So next time we hit uh, this page for this name, it restores it from Redis and uh, doesn't do all of this uh, typing thing, which also costs a bit of money. So. How we will do that is, I can only imagine by returning a streaming response like uh, they do here. So it's just a new response stream. We can do the headers here, why not? But then this stream, hmm. What is this stream? How do I handle this stream? That's my question. I want a readable stream that pipes through the stream that we get back from OpenAI, but also does our own stuff.
Do we need another leader? I'm not sure about this. That may be something that uh, I, I will look again offline and see what happens. Do we need to do the same thing that we did on the front end? Maybe. So what did we actually do here? We hit that endpoint. That is a stream. Get the response back. Just copy all of this and try to use it. Why is there a port controller here? Not sure. We may find out. So the readable stream, we create a new one here and on start, I guess, uh, we can do the create streaming st uh, start completion thing. say const response equals whatever this is and then we can do whatever we're doing on the front end so wait this can this be a sync hopefully And then won't do anything with streaming. response and then Spike also asks about the theme so don't I remember do check this Ah, this uh, Dracula. Hey. Can I have remembered this? Yeah, I don't think I've done any overrides. Yeah, I do like the streaming thing. nice I like the markdown uh, writing it is similar to what the open AI is doing but of course they're doing like all of this with the code blocks that looks amazing so <laughs> pretty fun stuff and of course they've created like AI and they're trying to create a general AI <laughs> and I'm impressed by the colors of uh, their uh, little chat demo but hey things have to look nice uh, right, so we're making it harder for ourselves to see if we can persist the whole response to the backend without having the front end send to the backend uh, the whole response because that can be tampered with. And I guess that's where we're in queue. 
do the signal thing. Right, so we messed up the backend. How does that affect <laughs> the front end? Seems like we're getting stuff. Now, I suppose we're not uh, getting JSON stringified stuff. Maybe not. So let's console log the value again. Nice. So now the value that we get back is uh, just what we want. No weird done uh, and stuff. So instead of doing all the try cuts craziness here, all we need is to append to our stream creating earlier on. Less fronted code. Amazing. Can't believe it works. Wow. So all these crazy things with the controller we created. It's very particular for me as Lint. Uh, right, so at the end, does uh, readable stream have an end? Do it the hacky way. I will make it so We, we can set the value here, that's fine. But after we're done with the while loop here, that's when we can persist to Redis. So let's console log complete response. 
uh, we may need a different name for this and try again did I go too far in the nest and seems he didn't like this Right, it works. So I'm expecting when the message ends and we stop having this nice cursor. We have this. Great. <laughs> but it looks like we keep the stream open. So how do we finish the stream? This is indeed the, the point where we can persist to read this, but how do we stop it? How do we complete a stream? Also, is that the case? Is that, is the network request still open? Is it done? Do we do? Do we ever get a uh, done here? It's not. What does that VS Code example have to say about this? Is it a controller thing? But we're not going to be a burden. Close. There you go. So do we have an end? Do we have a close? Do we have anything? <laughs> do we have a Start, stop. It does feel like we need to close this. From here, from here on the server. Controller close. It's fine. Let's see if the cursor stops being there, stops blinking. Yeah, we close the stream, amazing. So that could be the point where we do persist to our backend. So I guess we can kind of revert our server endpoint here. Eh, or no, our page svelte.
to say we never create a set completion anymore from here. But we do get a greeting back, maybe from Redis, and we can put it on the top level. And maybe we can call it DB greeting. We don't need to type it. And many things we don't need anymore here. And our front end can say that if db if data db greeting then do nothing to save them because you can say here. Another if would love it. If if db greeting and if that db greeting. Else, we'll do this nested if else. Great. Uh, what else we're doing here? I think that's it. So, on the server here. Oh, interesting. We need to do slightly more to not have the clean cursor. So assuming we only make it through here. So now we get this from Redis immediately. If not, then we stream the response from OpenAI immediately, which may be cooler than what we had before. But what we need to persist the response finally is to have our server a set greeting to Redis for this name, the parcel response. But wait, we only do that here after we've closed the connection. Maybe here. Maybe here. Ah, let's see here. And let's await this before killing. Let's keep the connection open. So let's do it like this. Cool. So again. We hit Redis, then if we put another name, so if we add 80 here, we get the response streamed back for Spanky80. I hope you're feeling elated today. Is it like elated? Yeah, kind of like it. Keep being eight amazing. <laughs> I think they just think that eight looked like an A. Oh well. But now, if we refresh here, you get this greeting immediately. And uh, I can go to Redis and uh, set, like, tweak this response and have a curated greeting for you. Uh, an AI assisted greeting for you. Right. So I think we did it. I think we even did the non existent bonus for up in a response stream within a response stream in the end. Didn't think we'd do it. So I'll recap and then hang with the, the chat as well. So we can see that on the live side, we either hit Redis and get a response instantly, or we get 
HTTP streaming afterwards, after the initial load, we get header footer and everything else. Oops, I clicked <laughs> before. And eventually we get uh, our response back. Elena for Pavlos. So we get the pulse in hand and mess in here. We hit open AI in five seconds or so. We eventually get the response from open AI and get it streamed as well to get magic streamed to the page. And we see it. What we've done today is we immediately get a streaming response back. The front end hits the our backend, which wraps the OpenAI backend to get into a streaming response that letter by letter uh, adds to what you're seeing. And we've had a little type in animation as well. And still, we do persist this response to Redis. So next time you hit it, you do get uh, it instantly which now that you have the, <laughs> we have the typing stuff may be less cool than uh, seeing it being typed for you but then again like users do get tired by seeing the same animations again and again it's fun the first time but i think this is gonna be it i think we did it i think it's been a while since we've done like all of the agenda for uh, the day and uh, it was quite neat like things went to plan, I would say. Everything besides the plus server stuff, which amazingly with a bit of Googling, we managed to do. So we, we created our own readable stream and passed through the OpenAI response to create an even handier, uh, a better response for the front end to use. So our front end code in the end is much simpler. So yeah, that's it. I can uh, wait for just a bit more from uh, the chat. Come back with uh, maybe Puppy Cameo. I'll catch you in a bit for the goodbyes. Thanks, Peggy, and everyone else in the chat, and everyone else watching, even if you aren't in the chat, I do appreciate it. I do feel your energy, and it makes me feel better to be on stream doing this than just working by myself. I will spend some time with our little puppy here, our summer, and until next time, I'll catch you for a next AS stream midweek, and then next Friday, Codename Excel again, probably more felt kit. Let me know what you'd like to come and to work on next. I didn't expect to go that far with the streaming responses today, so I'm tough and I need to think about what we'll be doing next. Again, thank you everyone. Have a lovely Friday evening and an amazing weekend. Bye. <laughs> He's not that grumpy usually. He's a lovely, lovely girl.